And this is the pre-show. This is the show that happens before the actual show. Got about uh, two minutes here. Hello, Marcelo. Hello, Dado. It's good to see both of you. It's Color Creative Week. And we're starting in about a minute or so. Jason from Cleveland, Ohio. Man, I love Ohio. It's been years since I've been there. It's been years since I've been almost anywhere. It's uh, pandemics for you. We got about another 30 seconds. I'm going to let a couple more people trickle in. I'm Jeff Greenberg, and this is uh, Mr. Green right above my head. Let's see, right there. There we go. This is Color Creative Week, and we're taking this very much from a perspective of editors. Hello, Fred from Seattle. Hello, uh, Alex Kandar from Serbia. It's so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, we're going to be uh, doing some real really on the ground items here today. Hello, Lucas. It's Color Creative Week. This is the last day. Uh, those of you just tuning in, we hope you've uh, joined us on the Discord. We'll bring up the Discord link a little bit later. This is live. You can ask questions. We're going to have some fun. Hello, Darren. Hello, Yatal from LA. God, I miss LA. I know Dada was out in LA a couple weeks ago. Closest I'm going to get is about a month from now at NAB. We're going to be announcing a bunch of things at NAB. You'll have to find Data or myself somewhere on the NAB floor. Hello, Tobias uh, in Munich. Green beer for everyone. That's right, Marcelo. Hey, Marcelo, about 20 minutes south of me is some of the best beer you can get in the U.S. Uh, we can talk and fight about that. It's Color Creative Week. I think I can get rid of the countdown at this point. There we go. Come up on screen. Give it a couple minutes for people to come in. Uh, let's try that. Let's see if this works. I'm doing this out of Ecamm. There, it's Color Creative Week. Now I can get rid of that countdown. I'm Jeff Greenberg, otherwise known as Mr. Green. Hello, everybody. Hello, Luca from New York. I was just in New York uh, two weeks ago. God, I miss that town. We're uh, today doing just some open office hours, and this is something we're going to be doing a little bit more regularly. Sometimes it'll be here through YouTube. Sometimes it'll be through Discord. Sometimes it'll be through Zoom. A real natural Q&A about a couple topics. And I've got a couple topics here picked out today. I'm going to announce a winner of uh, somebody who won the full uh, Color Lab Studio. Hello, Damon from Brooklyn. Man, uh, my friends at Able City over at Brooklyn is amazing. If you've never gotten over, if you need to really rent equipment, my friends at uh, Able City just do amazing jobs with, with their hardware. It's a place like where you can get your hands and play with, uh, whether it's an Alexa, whether it's a red or a black magic camera, you can just get your hands directly on that. And it's a Friday. It's Friday. It's St. Patty's Day. And I'm, we're all Irish today. I'm Jeff Greenberg. So I'm Mr. Green. That's uh, often how I go. If you've ever seen me speak in an event or uh, teach your group. Hello, Nicholas from Hamburg, man. And Burbank, Max. There's another place I miss is Burbank. Nicholas, uh, I was due to be out in Germany years ago, and sadly, uh, things came about where I couldn't go. I've been dying to get there. That's one of those things on my bucket list uh, to, to teach and do some work in Germany. Hello, Andre. We're uh, going to go ahead and start here. So this is Color Creative Week, and this is the last day of it. I'm Jeff Greenberg, otherwise known as Mr. Green. Uh, we're going to encourage you to check out our Discord. Let me put my Discord link up for here a second. So you can always join the discussion there. The beautiful part about that Discord link is it's live, real time. It's Color Lab centric, but it's also Resolve centric. We're going to have some editorial pieces there. I'm taking this approach for most of the stuff from an editorial point of view. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a master trainer. I teach train the trainer classes. I'm an editor and colorist. Now, I have trouble with saying the word colorist when Dado's in the room. Dado's in the room. I'm just a humble learner of these, these tools. 
But if data is not in the room, I, I can sometimes put on my colorist hat. I help them uh, design and work with the initial curriculum, uh, whether it's Fairlight, whether it's Fusion. I'm weak on Fusion at the moment, but I could uh, teach the class to give me a day to spin up. I've taught a little bit of, around everywhere in the world, uh, but editorial and color are my passions. Workflows are my passions, things that make our lives easier. And I'm going to be talking today about in these office hours about a couple topics I wanted to cover with everybody. But uh, it's Color Creative Week. Let me uh, bring this back up. Let's bring up a couple slides here. Today is day five. It's office hours with Mr. Green. I'm Mr. Green. I'm Jeff Greenberg. Uh, I'm Film Geek on all your social networks. You're welcome. I'm going to put this right over my own face. Oh, no, I can't because I don't have the... Uh, I'll bring that up in a moment, the Discord link. So this is office hours. And what we're going to do here in office hours is I'm going to pick a couple topics that I want to cover. But this is the question I get from everybody. Oh, I wanted to actually go here and make myself bigger for this. There we go. You can ask anything you like. I don't promise that I can get to it. But I'll be on the Discord link after. I can try and get to it here. I'm going to cover a couple of things. Hello, person with Cyrilla characters who's late. I, I'll do a terrible job of trying to pronounce your name. So I'm just so glad everybody could join us. But you can ask anything you like. I'm going to be taking a, a little bit more of a topic focus on editorial. We're going to be doing this stuff live. I'm going to tell you about my equipment because uh, my equipment is a little bit on the less powered side, which is very useful. Hello, Mary from Taiwan. Um, these are the concepts I'm going to be covering. I'm going to be covering them in sort of an editorial basis, but we'll be having some other pieces of it. We're going to talk about color management. We're going to talk about some of the AI models. I want to show you something that's unique to Color Lab that I just wish was everywhere called EL zones. We're going to talk about versions uh, and why versions are a really important way to work. And then, of course, we're going to talk about how the Discord. That's the whole concept of Discord, is that discourse can continue on Discord uh, after this. So uh, it's currently 1.05. I'm on the East Coast. Uh, I'm in Delaware. It makes me the first person any of you have ever met from Delaware. The, the kind of cool part about being in Delaware is it's where nearly everybody... Let's uh, throw up a couple other items there. Let's put up Mr. Green there. It's where uh, most court places are incorporated is Delaware in the U.S. It's the only state... Well, it's one of two states in the U.S. that does not have sales tax. So it's got the number one Apple store in the country. Uh, hi, Luca. Yeah, I was. I uh, didn't want to present. Oh, Luca, I'm so proud of you for presenting in that class. Uh, and that's being recorded. You'll have that for the future. You did a great job. Yeah, I've uh, taught a bunch of the Black Magic Train the Trainer classes. I do the same for Adobe. I do the same for Apple. And do the same for Avid. I teach symphony classes. I think all those tools are excellent. Of course, I personally feel at this point, AI assistance and workflows, and particularly Color Lab, is just the tool for it. And yeah, we know there's no Windows version yet. It's on the horizon. Patience. You're going to ask, you're going to download it. If you're using Windows, you can get um, Look Designer running in Windows. You can get some, some definitely some better color management through Look Designer uh, on Windows. But no, we. Uh, don't have Color Lab running yet on Windows, but it's it's on that very short list. Let's see. I did the uh, Mr. Green part. We've done the countdown. I want to again mention to join the discussion at Discord, but we're going to get started in one second. I have one thing I need to do, and I've got a winner here. I'm trying to remember where I put that. I think that's in here. Is it in here? Oh, I messed one item up. You'll forgive me, I'm sure. I'm looking for this. We got a winner. We got a real, real, real cool winner here. Let's see if that's it. Yeah, Eric Lau. Congratulations. I don't know if you're here, Eric, but uh, you've got a full a copy of Color Lab Studio. Uh, so Color AI Linux. Oh, God bless you, Aurora Films. God bless you. I wish. Uh, I'm a huge Linux fan, uh, depending on the day of the week, because I don't have hobbies anymore. I just have children and the occasional Linux or a Raspberry Pi. And like everybody else, I'm just excited about ChatGPT. Um, there's our winner. Congratulations, Eric. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. And with that, we're going to start breaking into office hours, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead here. We're going to start off with color management. And for that, I just want to punch over into Premiere Pro for a moment. So there's Color Lab. Let's get us over to Premiere.
When we're typically working in Premiere, we run into just this sort of an issue, which is um, they've had this Lumetri effect. And by the way, this is true for Final Cut as well as Premiere, but Premiere happens to use, I'm just bringing up the preferences. They've got right here, display color management. I really wish I could get, uh, let's see if I can get it up quickly. The My uh, Pointer Pro, it's um, Screen Pointer, how about Pro? Pro Mouse, let's see if Pro Mouse gives it to me. I've got a little mouse utility that blows stuff up and I just don't know, yeah, that'll be good enough. Does it, uh, no, I'm not, not gonna get, that's fine. So I'd like you to see, we've got display color management that requires GPU acceleration and it's adequate. It does some interesting things in Premiere, but it's not really what I want. Uh, under project settings, you'll see here in general, I believe this is where you, uh, I'm trying to remember where that, oh, it might be sequence settings, it's sequence settings. Sequence settings, I gotta come into a sequence for that. Oh, that's twice. There we go. Sequence settings. I'm just looking to see where my color information is. There it is, working color space. You get, it, it's not awful, it's just not much. Uh, Adobe is grafting into this, and this is what my first attraction was from Color Lab, which was this whole idea that we would have really robust color management. And we've got robust color management to premiere with this. So I'm just gonna switch to Color Lab. I'm gonna show you the base principle of that. So let's do a fetch. Hey, Cam Studio, remind me later. Let's do a fetch from Premiere. It's gonna go grab the footage over. And right away, it's bringing up this dialog box. And this dialog box is, what was my source camera science? There are two pieces here, there's really three. Here, we'll do this. We'll get real serious on you. No, it's almost serious. There we go. That's serious. There are three, three pieces here. Your camera, your thinking space, your output. Color Lab's using DaVinci, uh, no, it's using uh, Avery Wide Gamut. So we've got a lot of thinking space. It's really, you know, powerful. But I want to look here at my source cameras. So most of my cameras here, I have 11 shots. They're lighting up. I'm going to tell that that they happen to be, they happen to be ARRI footage. And so it knows how to convert those pieces. These two graphics aren't. Uh, they're Rec. 709. I probably would tell you because PNG files are probably better off as sRGB. We're gonna pretend here about these. They're gonna be an unknown camera. And then this last one here, this happens to be Rec. 709 space. I'm gonna show you how Color Lab makes this sort of color management work for us. So I'm gonna create a camera. We're gonna call this camera unknown. Uh, this is really classic. It's a classic issue. Uh, whether you're a colorist, whether you're an editor, you get footage some days and you have no idea where it came from. It's log or not log, and that's sometimes all you get. So we're gonna treat this as an unknown camera. And this camera type, something really great here built in the Color Lab is a generic log. And I'm gonna say create this camera. And this is an unknown camera, it's log generic, and I'm gonna take these shots here, and I'm gonna assign them to generic log. And there's a real under the hood power where Color Lab is going, okay, I'm gonna use some really good science and some AI to go, ah, I know how to handle this, even if I don't know which specific camera it came from. I'm also gonna create one here. This one shot happens to be Rec. 709. And I'll hit that little plus one more time and I'll call this a Rec. 709. I have no idea where this came from. And we're just gonna set its camera input display transform, IDT. If you're a Resolve user, one of the cool parts about Color Lab is when it pushes this stuff into Resolve, it actually builds a proper node tree, sort of the way you might with color space transforms. It has these display transforms from Color Lab that it uses. With all this set, I can say done. This now puts it into Color Lab, and Color Lab begins its analysis into the background. 
Now I'm gonna do something here on my system. It's analyzing it in the background. I need to uh, just kind of move this over just a little bit because I don't have enough space right about there. I'll put color. And what I'm seeing, hoping to see, there we go. I'm doing everything in direct 709, but these are all of the output color spaces that occur from Color Lab. And that's the real beautiful thing here, is that's what color management is. It's the idea I've got stuff coming in, I'm kind of equalizing it, putting it in a nice thinking space where we know where we're working, we're not gonna get any clipping, and then I'm popping it out. On Wednesday, Dotto went and showed you how to pop stuff out of Color Lab back to Premiere to actually create a Dolby Mastery uh, for, for Netflix's IMF format. There are a number of choices here. Probably if you're most of us and you're not grading into HDR, you're not grading for a projector, you probably want Rec. 709 as the output. And there's some variations here. I'm not getting into any of the variations. I am monitoring the chat. If you have questions along the line, feel free to ask. But what's going on here is Color Lab is equivocating all of these items. They're putting it in, it's color management. And it's what we wish our tools like Premiere had. This sort of color management makes it possible for us to essentially work under the same hood as we go along. And it, it knows something now about each of these shots. And you see that little blue check mark, that little blue check mark shows up. Oh, we're, we're on my favorite scope there. I'll come off my favorite scope. That's the Edlock so scopes. Uh, it's still doing its analysis. I'm on an i7, an i7 machine with uh, 32 gigs of RAM. So this is a laptop. It should do the analysis a little bit faster. I'm going to let it finish what it's doing. I just wanted you to see this idea that this is what color management is. And color management gives you this practical advantage of being able to, let's bring up the slide for that, uh, I think. Nope. i got to be here. There we go. Does that get me there? Color Creative Week. Oh, that's right. It's this one. There we go. And I want to stay. I don't want the color picker. I don't want the picker there. Color management's crucial because it's really difficult to get different log cameras to match without it. You're having to do all of it by, I really do under the hood analysis. You can't control what goes out without color management. I can easily push this out at 709, push it back later as an HDR grade. If I've got that for HLG, I can push this out as P3. This is the beauty of color management. Color Lab brings it to Premiere, brings it to Final Cut, and works well with Resolve. Now, Alexander asks this question, why does Color Lab use ARRI wide gamut when Resolve DaVinci wide gamut gives more color space? Alexander, I don't know. And this is the most honest thing I'm gonna do for you as a teacher. I'm gonna to turn to you and say, I don't know. I don't pretend to know everything on the planet. Um, I think the ARRI cameras and the ARRI flexibility is amazing. I would want a, one of the engineers at Color Lab to tell me that. I'm only working with what's in the hood. And this is a great time for me to remind you to come join the discussion over on the Discord. Uh, somebody smarter or better knowledgeable in the science of why will answer this question for you. Um, I probably am less comfortable with sticking with Blackmagic's proprietary system than ARRI. I just know ARRI is gonna be that camera for the future, but I'm just guessing at that point. So I figured I'd throw that in there. And again, I'm Jeff Greenberg, I'm Mr. Green. Let's get us back here. Oh, uh, I'm gonna assume that was Datto chiming in going, DaVinci da Wide Gamut has more color space. We're not gonna, worry too much about it other than it's just much more beautiful than Rec. 709 that uh, Color Lab happens to handle this. So that was the first thing I wanted to mention to you. Uh, hey, Alex Gander, the only thing I have to live on is my integrity as a teacher, as a consultant, as an instructor. I, if I don't know the answer, I'll go out and I'll get the answer. I'll go to somebody who knows that. And that's one of the reasons that I first met Dado was I, I was just blown away at the wealth of information he brought to the table. Okay, so um, that's why, what is color management, why it's important. And the beautiful part about that is, is I can just say here, I can just push this back to Premiere and this will take a moment, but it's just gonna update Premiere's timeline. It's just going to sit back and it's gonna pop it back to Premiere. Premiere ends up, I'll, I'll 
pick up the one from uh, a little bit earlier, but it ends up with a color lab effect on every single clip here. I'll point out the one thing you need to know for those of you who've never touched Color Lab before, you need to have the Color Lab panel installed and visible. I've built an interface specifically with it. Um, and I don't think, I think this one uh, uh, has already been great and you can see what that difference is. I'm going to switch back to Color Lab to bring up my second real topic of discussion here, which is the idea of color models. So, Color Lab's an AI tool. And we've got some color models here. I've just brought up the preferences. I should really do it the slow way. This is a, an instructor who Brees uh, that I sometimes forget is to make sure I show people how to get to settings. If you're on a Windows box, this won't work. But on a Macintosh, Command Comma is the one tool you need to know across the board because Command Comma brings up your settings. And what we're able to do here is we're able to change some of how Color Lab works. And particularly, I'm able to specify an output device, whether or not it's got other choices here. Uh, it's a pretty powerful way to set up the tool is to take a look at the preferences. And there are also project settings that are specific. In the same way, you know, you might want to use something for one project versus another. For example, these are my AI selections here, and I can choose a default. And that's part of that AI magic that exists in the tool. So when you push something over, we've kind of assigned of it's all of its color spaces. We're sitting here in the tool, and immediately I can bring up what's called this color tune. It's going to analyze this shot. Now it can be A for AI, A for analyze, or this teal button. But what Color Lab is doing is it's analyzing this based on information and based on derived information, and it gives me these choices. I don't want to get into what the values of each of these choices are because I'm speaking to you for a moment as editors. I kind of go, hey, I like the way that one looks, or I like the way this one looks, and I just want to massage from there. Yeah, there are actual heavy explanations between what finals versus dailies versus balance is. But this is a very fast way to work. I've built a Stream Deck profile for this. I'm using the Excel, which makes it really easy for me to move between these different models as well as the different, let me bring that back up, as well as the different choices. For example, I could use traditional controls, but I can come in here and just choose contrast and just pop the contrast on this further. And you can see it happening uh, behind me and I'll probably come in and play with the pivot. But this is the idea that there is AI occurring underneath the hood of what's going on. And what I'm adjusting here is the way the AI model interacts with this shot. So coming back to just our principles of where we're going today, I wanted you to see some of the AI models that are going on here in Color Lab, how quick it is to bring them up. And you can hit the letter A to bring up, uh, to do the analysis, and the Enter key to bring up this AI model. I'm often right away giving some flavor to my shots. So aside from the fact that I might, you know, push a little bit of blues into the gammas, a little blue into the gain, you know, it's an early morning shot. I'm often giving it a look at the same time. And I don't want to get heavy into these looks or the why behind them. We have a tendency when we're in a rush, when we're working, just to click and look for a look we prefer. After a while, you begin to go, oh, I know I like major C or major D, and you can favorite these. But this combination of a color and a look is where we're going to go here in a moment conceptually. Now, with all that being said, I want to go and bring us back to here for a moment. Hi. Uh, we've got some great discussions here in the chat. Uh, I've shown you the AI models. I want to talk to you about exposure. I'm talking to you as an editor. I teach color correction to people. I teach base color correction, starting from zero with scopes and really understanding your parade. For those of you who've ever used a false color chart, I want to just do a little discussion here about something that I think is better, and you can't get this as easily on a camera. The concept, and let's bring this up into Color Lab. The concept is going to be called Ed Lockman Zones. I'm going to show you that there. Oh, that's me. Hi, me. No, I'm going to be, actually, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, it's right here. It's called EL. So if you've ever seen a false color reading, 
it shows you your exposure and it shows you a couple warnings. The beautiful part about Ed Lockman zones, EL zones, is gray, mid exposure, zero, is dead center. Everything warmer is brighter. Everything colder is darker. And you can see in this image, and you can see with this overlay, how my exposure is. And my exposure is not bad. I might want that sky just a little bit brighter. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with you reading a waveform and deciding, you know what, Jeff, that's fine the way it is. But what I wanted you to see here with the EL zones is just this idea that instead of just being false color, we're getting a really quick picture. And I think it's a picture a little bit smarter than just a waveform to know what my exposure is. Now, there are two real practical parts about that that I think are have value. One is you can't get these traditionally in other tools because you got to know what the camera science is. You need to have the camera science right before these EL zones would work. Uh, although we're talking to a couple groups, a couple monitoring groups, so maybe we can get them onto their monitors if they know what the incoming camera is. It doesn't work without you knowing that. Now, in Color Lab, I've got this little crosshair here. It's an exposure adjustment. And I'm going to click and I'm going to say, I want his face exposed correctly. And you'll see it'll go a little bright and then gray and then boom, it's got his exposure figured out. I need to know nothing really about a shot. I don't have to be a colorist to go and grab this and just say, hey, just expose correctly for his face. And then I have the ability still to, because we didn't do any auto work here, to say, I'd like this to be up a stop, up a half a stop, down a half a stop. These are camera stops. If you're used to working with a camera, you, this is the offset for these zones. So it's they kind of work hand in hand. It's a really beautiful, beautiful way of working. But it's called EL zones, and I just wish more tools had it. Uh, at one point, I said to Dado, I would really love to see if we could maybe just give that part away for free for this tool. Uh, if you've got Look Designer, which is cross-platform, you will find that these EL zones are available to you inside of Windows, Resolve, they're inside of uh, Premiere, Windows and Mac, Resolve, Windows and Mac. It's just this idea that you have access to these EL zones. You don't have the cool pointer tool, but you still have a lot of the science, the camera science, a little less of the AI with uh, Look Designer. So that's exposure. And one of the, you know, when I'm working fast, and that's why I'm going to AI, is when I'm working fast, it gives me the ability to just go, I need this to be exposed right, that to be exposed right, and then I'm doing a little massage. I think of AI as an assistive tool, not as a replacement tool for, for a colorist, for a human being. And I think that's how we're finding almost all the stuff. It's just making, getting to the fun stuff faster. Uh, and I'm gonna sit back and I'm just gonna tell this entire thing. I just want you to match the scene. Oh, stop that. Let's stop that a second. I actually want this to reference. I want that to be my master shot. I want everything else in this piece to reference that. So if you would match that scene. And what Color Lab is doing behind the scenes here is it's going to each of these shots and it's making them match this shot. It's using the combination of its AI models and it's getting matching out of the way. And a really dear friend of mine said, you know, you can use lift gamma game wheels, you can use whatever controls you like, and you can get one shot to look good. Getting in the match though, getting shot, multiple shots to look good, that's part of the craft of what where color comes in. That's part of the craft of what it is to, to do color balancing work. And I'm sorry, it's a little bit boring of a task a little bit. The reason it's boring is it's just, it's a slog, I gotta do this for every shot. And the whole beautiful thing about AI to me is AI should be making our lives easier and faster, not replacing us. So the idea here is assistance. It's going through and it's doing this so I can get to the fun parts of what I do faster. While we've been talking here, uh, Blaine Gray asked, what happens if after I've already done the transfer back to Resolve, or I'm gonna paraphrase here, Blaine, back to Premiere or back to Final Cut, I need to change the scene and just need to recolor it. Can I pull one shot? Blaine, you can slice this about five different ways. You can have it refetch the entire scene. You can have it push just the one shot, push the entire scene. That is kind of a hand in hand work, you know, with Color Lab. So it's a really nice addition to your tool. 
I, when I'm working in Resolve, I'm working with fixed node tree. It understands how to push into a fixed node tree. It understands how to bring the back. Look at the, all the shots. I got that nice sort of bluish tint to it. Oh, you can't see it because I'm in the way. There we go. That's a little bit better. But there's that idea that the whole scene is done, and all I got to do is push back to Premiere. I can make a change and push one shot. I can make a change and push the whole timeline back. I can fetch back and forth, but anything you do in Resolve somewhere else on the tree, anything you do in Premiere or Final Cut after Color Lab, Color Lab won't see, right? That, that should be pretty intuitive, but just in case, I wanted to make sure I said it. The, um, I'm, so I, I kind of wanted to talk about exposure. I've shown you how the shots, you know, we've got the match. I still go back and I still check every single shot. So, you know, I like this, but maybe I just feel like it's a little too bright. I can still bring up all of my color models. I can still make choices all, all with these. I can say, oh, I like RGB a little bit better. It is all primary control corrections though. There's no secondaries. It's part of its speed. There's no render in the process here. If I push it back to Premiere, it's pushed. I'm good to go. Uh, and that was what I wanted to talk to you about exposure. One neat thing uh, for those of you who push themselves on the, I'm still feeling my way through color, which is a lot of my editorial friends, a really amazing way to really see exposure is to desaturate an image and take all the color out of it. It makes it a lot easier for you to evaluate brightness of images. Of course, that's a lot of why I love Ed Lockman zones. And here in uh, Color Lab, I can just bring up a dual version of it so I can really see how flesh tones are comparing and the like. I'm going to turn off the dual. I'm going to come back here, uh, look at my Color Week slide, talk about my next real topic, versions. And then I'm going to turn this open, uh, make sure I've covered other, other items here. If you're coming from an editorial background, if you're coming from anything other than pretty much Resolve, when I say version to you, you think in your head, oh, he's duplicated the sequence in Premiere or Final Cut and maybe done a version just for mobile, just for vertical, just for the gram, for Instagram. Here, when I talk about versions in color, it's a comparative look. I'm gonna show you that back in Color Lab. So let's jump back there. Oh, I'm gonna be over here. There we go. And so over here in Color Lab, I'd like you to see I've got versions. This is where I started the initial fetch. And this is where I am now. Let's let's lose the uh, two up. There we go. Let's do some more changes here. Uh, let's do this on my, uh, let's do this on the shot. Let's open this up a little bit. Let's pull back the show look because maybe it's a little too strong. Maybe I wanna bring some warmth back to it. Okay, and I can save another version here with this little plus. It's a why I say, uh, yes, yes, I'd like a new version. So maybe I wanna try one of the, what's called smart LUTs here. Just try to see how it looks. I'm just gonna, let's try this green one. I'm gonna double click. It's gonna do its thing. It's a little strong. I'll pull it back a little bit more. It's got a, quite the color cast, but I'll pull away from that cast. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Okay, let's uh, make that Y another version. So this idea of versions allows me to really quickly do comparative level work to see what it is I like. I mentioned this to you because the thing that I've encountered when I first started using Color Lab, I went to hit undo. There's no undo in the tool because Typically, when I'm in, say, Resolve, I do a lot of turning on and off my grade, turning on and off a node. I can't turn on and off AI. AI is a sort of a additive process. It's, a, it's multiple things going on. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm creating versions that make it really easy for me to do comparison work. So I can go, okay, I'm gonna try this out. This is an AI reference and you can bring in your own AI references. You can bring in your own iconic films. Hey, I kind of like that. Let's see how it looks compared to where it started. Okay, I like that. You know, I'd like it if it was just a little warmer and I'll just pull up the temperature and I'll add another version. And it's always that top version that's gonna get pushed back. So this is sort of my concept. I call this 
versions for editors. Uh, and with that being said, uh, I'm going to come back to almost my last slide. Unless there are questions about versions. And if you're not familiar with versions, that's okay. Uh, our last concept is the discussion continues at Discord. Let me bring myself back uh, full screen here. I'll bring up the Discord link just for everybody. I tend to hit Discord on a daily basis, although I've been bad the last couple of weeks. Uh, you come, it's a great support group. You don't have to own any of these products. There's stuff for Resolve, there's stuff for editors, there's stuff for AI, because we're such an AI group. I, I really encourage you to come join this and make this sort of part of your daily information. The thing that's really cool about Discord is really a, a twofold item. Discord has real-time capability and it's got threaded messaging is going on as well. Mark asks, when will the Windows version of Color Lab be available? Again, this comes with my brutal honesty. I don't know. I'm not one of the engineers. Once upon a time in a different century, I went to school for computer programming and decided it wasn't for me. I was on my way to be becoming a physician. I took a film class and look where we are now, disappointing my parents at every, every level along those lines. It's not true at all. Uh, I loved, I fell in love with post-production. I still love it to this day. It's been more than 25 years of working in post. I think AI is just this beautiful cutting edge field. And that's part of my love of, of Color Lab here. It's just that it's doing such wonderful things along these lines. So Mark, I would love to tell you tomorrow it's available. What I will tell you is that if you want uh, over on, on the site, in fact, uh, let's see if I can manage to bring up a, a different version of myself here. I will tell you, because this is Color Creative Week, uh, I'll tell you on Color Lab, you can buy Look Designer now. Look Designer totally works. Mac, Windows, Resolve, uh, Premiere. And the beautiful part is you get that look science in there. You get that that uh, color science in there, even if you don't get the, the really cool AI pieces. Random question from Andor, which is what I live for. A student of mine asked, can you set up to work from camera wall with more than one kind of raw? And or the answer to you is in Resolve, and right? This is my editor's class, not my Resolve class. Yeah, of course you can work with more than one raw format. Uh, it's something you do at the preferences level. And then secondarily, so you know, is we're going to use color space transforms inside of our color management there. And you can work with as many raw cameras as you like. I love the fact that Datto gets it, gets it in there for, for the good authority. But yeah, of course you can. Um, I mean, I'm right now working with a group, working with three different raw cameras. And secretly, because they they haven't really they're they haven't learned the this new concept of AI and Color Lab, I've been using Color Lab to build some in-between LUTs for their on-set camera monitoring. So everything looks the same between their different cameras. It's uh, 36 past the hour. I'm going to let this go. I want to mention, uh, hey, uh, just because I think it's uh, fun. Again, my name, last name is Greenberg. I'm Mr. Green. That's Film Geek uh, on all your favorite social networks. Uh, but I'm Mr. Green, especially in the Color Creative Week and around Color Lab. We're uh, going to NAB. I'm going to be speaking at Post Production World. I believe uh, Dad is also speaking at Post Production World at the a remote grading conference, or no, no, the director of photography conference. Uh, it's going to be talking about AI and imagery, I believe. Uh, I want to make sure I mention, aside from the Discord, I want to mention just a last one out there. Uh, Eric Lau, you won uh, Color Lab Studio, if you're seeing this or not. Uh, uh, this week has been amazing. I loved what we went on. All these pieces of, of course, recorded. They're available part of the channel. There's a ton of great information. There's a ton of great stuff coming up. We are about a month ahead of the NAB show. There will be a lot of cool stuff, a lot of AI happening. Uh, AI is a fast moving field. And one of the beautiful parts about Color Lab is we're about two years ahead of everybody else in some of the AI tools we're doing. It's been great seeing everybody here today. I thank you for showing up. Uh, you can find me at Jeff at Color Lab with a U. That's because you're important or because you're English.ai. 
Uh, you can also find me, Jeff, at Jay Greenberg Consulting, Film Geek on all your favorite social networks. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, this has been Color Creative Week. It's sad that we've got to put it to bed, but we're going to be doing regular office hours like this throughout the year. Uh, come to colorlab.ai to find out about the schedule. And thanks for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and maybe one of you will have one Color Lab. And if not, it's really the best tool in your arsenal. It's going to help you get to the fun parts of color faster if you're a colorist. If you're not, it'll help you get good looking imagery with so little work in a color managed profile. Thanks for watching. And of course, uh, you know, just for Jason, why don't you join the discussion over at, uh, let's see if I can get that. Uh, join the discussion. Who's the Jeff? Here we go. Over on the Discord, which is where I'm headed now. Bye, everybody.